गुड मॉर्निंग नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम माय नेम इज भुवन अपूर्व झा दिस इज द इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एक्सप्लेन्ड लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड द थ्री टॉपिक्स दैट आई हैव फॉर यू टुडे नंबर वन वी विल गो हेड एंड अंडरस्टैंड द सेकंड होम ऑफ द एशियाटिक लाइन ओके सो अप अंटिल नाउ यू हैव बीन अवेयर ऑफ दैट यू फाइंड द एशियाटिक लाइन इन द गिर सोमनाथ से द रीजन ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ गुजरात ओके बट अ सेकेंड वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी इज नाउ बिंग प्रपोज इन फैक्ट you will be you already find uh, lines there okay so is the barda wildlife sanctuary so we'll go ahead and seek to understand that and also understand exactly why are you going ahead and distributing the lines what's the logic what's the science behind it number 2 we'll understand uh, real estate investment uh, uh, a body you know that cb has uh, formed and it has in fact gone ahead and laid new frameworks for it okay so we'll aid, go ahead and understand the real estate investment trusts okay and the last one is obviously going to be about an autoimmune disease that is known as rheumatoid arthritis okay what are autoimmune diseases and say what are the other examples of autoimmune diseases what is the cause how does rheumatoid arthritis develop and so what is the proper avoidance we'll understand that and as always we'll look at the questions mcqs okay niranjan good morning bulbul good morning niranjan thank you so much for your uh, uh, comment thank you guys okay let's get started so if you want to go ahead and access the entire pdf of this lecture you will find it in this telegram channel that i'll upload around noon <coughs> okay so you find after gir barda wildlife sanctuary is now proposed as the second home for asiatic lions okay the gujarat forest department what you recently find has presented its proposal to make barda wildlife sanctuary the second home to the lions under the project lion at 2047 So, if you go back and see the history of Asiatic lions, okay, what you will find is that at one time their number had dwindled down to around twenty. Okay, that's all that were present there at one time. Now, to according to the latest uh, uh, say uh, lion census that has been done, you find the number is close to around five hundred and twenty-three. You see, almost what a thirty time increase in the number of the Asiatic lion, and that has come why because of intense management. conservation efforts on part of the gujarat forest department okay and well what was the origin of the threat so obviously it was to do with hunting okay it was to do with the interface between animal and man that conflict that arose so there was lack of support okay and so how did the gujarat support uh, gujarat uh, forest department go about this entire plan of you know the management and conservation of these asiatic lions first they went ahead and inter- went and, and uh, like uh, completely got in sync with the local communities so you had the maldharis okay and say the cattle that was present there all of them were managed they required to be managed okay it's a very sensitive uh, animal and so if your cattle has any sort of disease and if the particular animal goes ahead and consumes that diseased animal yes then you find that straight away the numbers could go ahead and go down you know they are very susceptible to disease so this is the entire concept okay it was done through community led participation on behalf of the forest department that had an integrated method looking to go ahead and conserve the asiatic lion okay shriram ruchi good morning good morning guys thank you okay let's go ahead and understand about the barda wildlife sanctuary so it's roughly around what near nearby porbandar but it is quite far away from say the gir forest national park that we know of okay now it has a hilly landscape and the sanctuary sprawls over an area of close to 200 square kilometers you have two waterways the bileshwari river and the jogri river okay and now let's look at it the ethnic races such as maldharis bharwads rabaris and gadwis okay they are present in the area which is why you find that the community led conservation that we talk about yes takes these communities along they have been made equal stakeholders in the conservation process okay now it has abundant floral diversity also known for its uh, medicinal plants okay and so the other flora the other fauna that you find there you are looking at leopard hyena wild boar so you have a prey base yes why is this important because this is your prey base now does the whole project have only natural prey base no okay what you find is an artificial prey base is also been developed okay now what is an artificial prey base so alongside the wild, uh, vardha wildlife uh, say uh, the barda wildlife sanctuary yes so the lions of these particular wildlife sanctuary 
right? For them, you find that the Gujarat Forest Department has gone ahead and set up another uh, institution, another organization where they are going to go ahead and develop praise. Yes. And then those praise, those say uh, herbivores are going to be fed to the lions. Now, what is being done here? Essentially, you are insulating that disease concept. Okay. The more you source your meat from outside for the say lions, the more susceptible the lions are. Okay. So, to insulate the lions against say potential disease that may so arise, yes, that particular uh, say a food aspect is also been taken care of under this project. Very, very important to know that. Okay. Charu, good morning, good morning, welcome. Okay. So, do understand that it has an artificial prey base also, which is being set up for the Barda Wildlife Sanctuary Lions. Okay. Now, what exactly is Project Lion that we just mentioned? The Project Lion at 2047. Yes, this is the goal to have a sizable number of Asiatic lions. And how is it being done? By integrating conservation and eco development. You see, this is the method. You can't just have this a forest department that can do it in isolation. No, you are going to have to go ahead and engage the community also. Okay, and when you have community support, you will find that the conservation efforts are more likely to succeed. Okay, so the project being implemented in the Gir landscape in Gujarat, the last home of the Asiatic lions. What is the status? Well, you see, endangered. Because it has come up from 20 to 523. Yes, it has been lifted above critically endangered now. It is just endangered. Why? Intense conservation efforts by the Gujarat government. Okay, Wildlife Protection Act Schedule 1, which means the highest level of protection is accorded. And under sites, it's under App Appendix 1. Now, what is sites? Sites is this inter governmental say agreement okay that you go ahead and look at the sensitive flora and fauna and you go ahead and regulate their movement their trade okay that aims to ensure that international trade in wild animals and plants both you see flora and fauna sites covers it so that well you have sustainable movement yes sustainable trade is there if at all okay it was adopted in 73 came into force in 75 right now although this is a point that you should note what you find is that even though it is legally binding on those who go ahead and sign and ratify these sites, okay, at no point it should be construed to go ahead and replace a national law or a national policy. The country will still need to go ahead and frame a set of national laws that will be in sync in accordance with sites. Okay? So think of sites as the say framework under which the government can go ahead and frame a particular law. Okay? Right? Let's look at this question very quickly, friends. So, which of the above are consequences of setting up a second home for the lions in Gujarat? Okay, so up until now you have say the Gir National Park and now you have say the wildlife sanctuary that is being set up. Right, so what are you trying to do? By going ahead and regulating the movement of your lions, are you going ahead and narrowing down your gene pool? Okay, are you looking at reduced risk of disease or number three? Safe habitat for old lions. Now, what does this mean? Essentially, what you find is that lions are territorial, just like any other cats. Okay. And younger lions are more prone to go ahead and say, uh, attack an older lion so as to showcase dominance. So, you need a safe space for the old lions. Does that provide, you know, are you looking at the second home that is being set up? Will that help secure the safety of my old lions? Your neighbor, good morning, good morning, how are you? Welcome. So, this is essentially the question. Let me know your answers in the comment box. Right, before I go forward, uh, just in 60 seconds or less, you are looking at this special once, uh, uh, like it's, it's a chance of a, a lifetime, in fact. Okay, an uh, intense course for your prelims has been launched by Study IQ IAS. Okay, and what you find is that it has been given at a very affordable cost and well, this has the most consolidated effort, okay, daily question solving, almost close to 40-50 questions, okay, and the, the, whenever we discuss say the uh, chances of a candidate's success in the prelims, yes, I have discussed this with several students in the past, you know, it's not just the knowledge level, knowledge level is one thing, but you got to have the ability to solve questions and that needs to go hand in hand. Okay, and this is the entire focus of this 
SIP Plus 2024, which is success in prelims being launched by Study IQ IAS. Yes, head over to the website, look at the course deliverables, and quickly go ahead and sign up for this. Use the code BA Live so that well you and I get to collaborate and work towards your success in the prelims of 2024. Okay. Let's move on to the next topic. Afford Gamer. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? So if you understood the first topic, guys, very quickly, may I request you consider leaving me a like. It will be of uh, immense uh, boost to my confidence and give me an encour encouragement too. Okay. Now let's look at rights. Sebi launches new framework for fractional ownership of real estate. What is fractional ownership? <clears throat> I beg your pardon. So let's look at it. Here is say a particular real estate. Okay, let's call this real estate A. Now, if you want to go ahead and secure the entire real estate for yourself, yes, you are looking at a sizable investment. Yes, you are going to spend quite a lot. Okay, but what happens if you are a uh, one among the pool of investors who are being managed by a company? For example, company B has around say three investors of that sort. Okay, you are looking at say person X, person Y, person Z. And all of them pull in their money to a company B. And then the company goes and well secures the loan for you, secures the investment for you. What happens in this case? You have fractional ownership of property A. Okay. So this is essentially your real estate investment. Okay. This is the REIT that we talk of. Now, what is essentially REIT? This is the company that goes ahead, takes money from its investors and then invests in a property. Now, does it do it for the purpose of developing the property? We will see. Or is it is the property to be used, say, just as an investment tool? Okay. We'll look at all of that. So, and we'll also understand why is SEBI going and what are the say, uh, frameworks that are being launched here. But please understand first, what is fractional ownership? This essentially is fractional ownership. Okay. Now, what happens in this case, your investment burden on each individual is low. Your risk is, is split, it's low. In this case, if you just went ahead and secured the property on your own, your investment is high, your risks are high. Obviously, your returns will also be high. But in this case, your returns are also divided, your risks are also divided. Right? Let's go ahead and understand Real Estate Investment Trust. It's a company that owns and typically operates income producing real estate. Now you might ask me, so what does it do? It's housing projects only or commercial projects. What you'll find is that it goes ahead and invests money in both office and retail spaces. Right? Now they pool money from the investors and invest in commercial real estate projects. Okay. Now, these may include office buildings, malls, apartments, hotels, resorts, all sorts of real estate. The company will go ahead and invest your money. Now, here is the point you should know. A real estate investment trust will not go ahead and develop a real estate property. No, it's not a developer. This is the biggest difference. It looks at a property as an investment pool and investment source. It's not going to go ahead and renovate or develop that particular property or bring something up from scratch. Okay, it just goes, goes and acts as a reseller. Okay, it buys and develops properties primarily to operate them as part of its own investment portfolio. So you'll find that a particular real estate investment trust, yes, it will have stakes in multiple properties. And all of them are essentially just sources of revenue for it. It's a source of investment for it. Okay, no particular changes can be made or will be made by the REIT. Okay, so it provides a way for individual investors to earn a share of the income produced without having to go out and buy commercial real estate. Okay, this is fractional ownership. Now, they are publicly traded like stocks, okay, which makes them highly liquid, right? They are basically like shares. That's all you have to understand. It's as if you are owning a share on a stock exchange, right? And so thus you find that the person who goes ahead and invests money in a particular REIT, they have the option of entry and exit any time that they want. Okay. There is no lock-in period as such. Got it? Simple. Now, what are the changes that SEBI has came, come up with? Madhvi Puri Butch, the uh, chairperson of SEBI, released this yesterday, on Saturday, in fact. 
So let's look at it. A particular SMREIT, a small medium real estate investment trust, needs to have 50 crore. Earlier, you had REITs, right? That needed to have minimum 500 crores of investment or asset value. Now that has been reduced. Okay, and you have the ability to create separate schemes for owning real estate through SPVs. Essentially, you are going to go ahead and form a company, okay, which will go ahead and operate several projects, right? You're also looking at providing a formal structure to small and medium real estate investment trusts, right? So who's going to be the fund manager? What is the qualification? What is the NAV? What is the distribution uh, ratio? What is the income ratio? The risk ratio? All of that. The finer details provided by the SEBI, right? And why is SEBI doing it? Because, well, this is, a, 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 it's gaining a lot of relevance, okay? If you just go ahead and see, huh? many people are going and pooling their money together and operating and getting part uh, and taking part in REITs. So thus SEBI realizes that, well, because it's people's money and SEBI's entire mandate is to go ahead and protect people's money, which is why SEBI has gone ahead and taken over and will release these set of new rules. Okay, so this is the entire concept of the small and medium real estate investment trusts, the new framework for which was launched by the Securities and Exchange Board of India. Very quickly, you will go ahead and answer these questions for me too. Question number two, REITs are investment vehicles that can be used by real estate players to attract private investment. They allow one to invest in income generating real estate assets and statement three. You can invest in both office and retail estate, uh, retail real estate. Identify the correct statements for me. Okay, leave your answers for me in the comment box like you have been doing so far. Very quickly now, once again, in 60 seconds or less, the entire, because the first one that I showed you was to do with just prelims, the success in prelims plus course. Now this is the entire course, not just prelims, but also mains and interview, uh, answer writing, yes, interview guidance, the whole 22 yards of UPSC preparation is what this entire comprehensive GS Foundation course being offered by Study IQ is all about. And what you will find is that, well, the new batch starts very, very soon. Okay. English batch, in fact, in just uh, seven days from now, I believe, or three days from now. Yes, three days from now. You have the English and the English batch, the morning batches beginning on the 30th of November. Go ahead very quickly. Okay. After the class ends, look at the course deliverables of this too. If you are someone who has been associated with our uh, foundation program or a prelims to interview initiative, yes, you will realize how much of concept building that we work on. Okay, That is the entire focus. No uh, going ahead and giving you notes and then asking you to, uh, you know, mug at them. Yeah, Road-based learning doesn't get you too far in life. Okay, So this is the entire focus. Go ahead. Once again, use the code BA Live. You will get allotted to my batch and obviously you get a massive discount, much to your benefit. Right. Let's look at the third topic, an autoimmune disease, which is anti-rheumatic medicines may be able to provide thyroid illness. So this is the headline. So let's understand what is an autoimmune and inflammatory disease that rheumatoid arthritis is all about. Okay. Essentially, you what, ha what happens is that your own body starts attacking your own body. That's an autoimmune disease. Okay. And thus you find that the most visible interpretation of that is that you have joint pains. Okay. Immense pain in your joints start to happen. Now, this several joints get covered at one time. Okay. It does not say one particular joint. It starts from say your knees, your feet or your fingers and then it starts to go ahead and spread. Now, what happens? Because of your immense pressure that is being put on your joints, right? Your joints start to go ahead and deteriorate. Right? The tissues start to deteriorate and after that eventually you are left with deformity. Right? So this is the concept of an autoimmune disease. So for example, you look at say, uh, right, type 1 diabetes. Let's understand now. Type 1 diabetes. Right? In which case what happens? What happens? Your beta cells, huh? they are attacked by your own body. So thus your insulin cap capacity is reduced. Thus you have type 1 diabetes, right? So similar say uh, particular diseases in which your own body is attacking your own body is essentially an autoimmune disease, right? So let's look at it. Your immune system attacks the healthy cells in your body, thus causes inflammation in the affected parts of the body. Now you have 
joints, several joints in fact get attacked and thus over a period of time you have tissue damage eventually, say the points that have been attacked, they start to get uh, deformed in a particular manner, okay. So what are say the particular uh, symptoms that you should look out for, okay. So you will see that eventually first you will have numbness, numbness in those particular joints, okay. Your joints might start to look a little bit reddish, it might almost look like you have a rash, okay. Immense pain will start to develop, okay. And then that pain starts to go ahead and spread throughout your body, right. You will have dry eyes and mouth, weight loss, obviously disrupted sleep because you are in pain, correct. And thus you will have joints that start to look red and discolored and thus rheumatoid arthritis takes over. Now, go ahead and answer this question for me. Which of the above may be classified as an autoimmune disease, right? Simple concept, we discussed it right now. Type 1 diabetes, HIV, AIDS, vitiligo. Right, let me know your answers too in the comment box. This is question number three, by the way. Okay, so if you have any doubts that we did of all the topics, you go ahead and reach out to me on my Instagram channel. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and address it for you. Now, let's look at the questions of the last class. Southern oscillation mode, we discussed in the last class, right? We discussed about the southern annular mode, okay? So, where, what does it do? Essentially, it's to do with Antarctic oscillation, we discussed Australia, yes, these westerly winds, their north-south migration as to how it goes ahead and affects rainfall in Australia, right. Which of the above leads to less than normal rainfall over Australia? Simple concept, anywhere you see El Nino, which means you are essentially looking at if this is South America, this is Australia, right, you are looking at El Nino, in which case you will have high pressure here. Yes, because your warm water, your western pacific pool hasn't come to the extent that it should be coming. And thus you realize that in any case, in, in the slightest case that you have high pressure at Australia, which means you have reduced rainfall. The story ends there, okay. So El Nino, reduced rainfall. Once again, El Nino, reduced rainfall, true. La Nina, which means you have more than average rainfall. Yes, your western pacific pool has formed to a higher degree near Australia, which means you will have low pressure and low pressure means more rainfall here, right. And Mudoki, in which case your high western pacific pool is bang middle, in the middle of pacific ocean, once again reduced rainfall. So your 1, your 2 and your 4 is the answer here. Very, very important concepts, the key concepts of geography all mixed together to give you this question. Dr. Sriram, you are absolutely correct. Good answer, Dr. Sriram, badia. Question number 3. The International Lunar Research Station is a planned mission by which two countries? Okay. North Korea, obviously, it's an intelligent guess. You can figure out North Korea will not be a part of this. Okay. It's Russia and China, A plus B. Right. Which of the above is India part of? Outer Space Treaty, absolutely. Signed and ratified. Rescue Agreement, yes. Signed and ratified. Okay. Moon Treaty, signed but not ratified. Okay. Artemis Accords, signed and ratified. So which of the above is India a part of 1, 2 and 4, right. And question number 5, how many of the above are included under the definition of disaster in India? Disaster management, again a very important concept, yes, uh, in, entire subject in fact that you should be studying in detail, right. So let's understand this, lightning strike is not categorized as a disaster in India because the government of India is of the view that it is a behavioral problem that can be addressed by proper precautions, proper information dissemination, okay. Air accidents are classified, poor air quality not yet, avalanche yes, 2 and 4 only, which means 2 pairs are included under the definition of disaster in India. Right, my star individuals, Neeraja, Pooja, Harshit, Manoj, Amit, Chadding Rakun, Akhil, Kamlesh, Koda, Mandeep, Satyabrata, Ayush, Nishchay, Vidit, Gyatso and Aditya. Good answers guys. Excellent job done, okay. Continue this focus, regardless of whatever else happens, your focus on question solving, solving should not change at all, right, okay. With that, we'll call it a wraps. This was the Indian Express Explained, where we took a look at the three most important topics that you ought to know of. And we also looked at the questions. If you understood the three topics, do consider leaving me a like. And I will see you tomorrow morning in the next class of Indian Express Explained.